I really want to know who you guys think is going to benefit most from this coaching staff. We already know. We're not going to talk about it to death about the previous coaching staff, right? We get it. Okay, I'll give you guys my first one. Okay, there's three guys. The first guy who I think is going to benefit the most is probably going to be the same answer and the obvious answer is a lot of you guys. Okay, definitely. Just think back because so many times last year when Cade, he run the offense and as soon as he crossed half court, you got eight eyes on him. Teams knew that we were limited offensively, right? And he still somehow averaged 23, seven to five. But he's going from that to having more spacing and the coach who turned his last backcourt into an all-star backcourt. If you think about it, JB Bickerstaff, he also mentioned that he wants to experiment with his roster and with the lineup. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him moving around a little bit, maybe the shooting guard here and there, you know, experimenting, you know, maybe even small forward a little bit, you know, putting him in the post. We're going to see a lot of interesting things, I think, this season. And that's the thing. He doesn't need to up his point. He's already at 23. 24, 25 is, I think we're going to see from him as far as his average for next season. I think you're going to see the assists go way up. I know it's, it doesn't seem like much, but I think the little things are going to make all the difference with him. I think because it's easier now, we're going to see how hard it was. Like I said before, man, anytime your coach is saying that they want to turn your star player into a two-way player, sign me up all day long. You don't have too many guys in the league like that. I always mention it, and I love this guy, right? Luka Doncic. I love Luka. I absolutely love Luka. Luka is one of the best offensive players I've ever seen in my life. In my life. It just doesn't make sense. His IQ is off the charts, man. And he he's crazy. But anyway, I can't call him a two-way player because he doesn't give the effort on defense. He just doesn't. We saw what happened in game four of the finals last year when he did get effort. Number one, they won the game. And number two, his shots were coming up short, front iron. And having a guy like Kay Cunningham, he can do that. He can do that. Because he is, all once again, he's not looking to score 27, 28, 29, 30 points a game. That's not what he's looking to do, right? And he also is in pretty good shape. He's got a pretty good diet from what we've been told, from what we understand. He has the, the measurables for it, and he's strong enough. He's gotten stronger. He's continuing to get stronger. I've seen him offensively body Jimmy Butler at the rims. Whichever game of the season last year, we played the Heat to start the season. He was going at Jimmy. He was pushing Jimmy up off of him, getting to the bucket, and letting the ball bounce off the head as it comes through the net. He's strong, man. He's strong enough to do that. So watching him guard and Tatum, and two years before, watching him and uh, Isaiah Stewart stuff JB, Jalen Brown, at the rim to end the game. Like, we've seen him clamp guys. We've seen him do it. I think with Cade, he was conserving a lot of his energy for the offensive end because he knew he was pretty much the primary weapon out there other than Jaden Ivey, but Jaden Ivey still is learning, right? So he knew he was the primary weapon offensively. So he has to conserve energy, right? I think that was the case last season and him having some of the load taken off of him, having a guy like a Tobias Harris who can go get buckets every now and then and Kay can just chill on that possession, is gonna give him the energy he needs throughout the rest of the game to be able to clamp defensively. Um, it's, it's so much of a domino effect of having these guys here on the team now that's gonna help in so many ways and I just can't, I just can't wait to see it. It's like whenever he's put in a situation like that, he always rises to the top. Even when you think about the, um, the rookie game. Remember the rookie game? When all things were equal on both sides and both teams were even, he was the best player. And he hit the game ceiling three. And I think it was a championship game. It's just a rookie game, but I'm just saying, when all things are equal and your team is not inferior most nights, you're going to show how good you are. It's just going to happen. You just got to have some guns with you. Anytime he has talent around him that is equal to the opposition, he's going to shine. Let me get to my second guy. Y'all said Ivy. I also said Ivy. So like, I actually sat down and thought about what he might be experiencing this whole process you know his the way he's being treated on the job so imagine this imagine you getting hired for a job right and in your first year three weeks into the job you got to learn and perform on the fly without one of your best co-workers to help you learn for the rest of that year so three weeks in your co-worker your friend who knows the job who can really help you out he's out for the rest of the year so imagine you then still showing up and performing above expectations you figured it out trial and error figuring it out but i'm showing up then the following year right your boss tells you that you're getting demoted so granted like you got demoted because you know you had some areas of improvement too like everybody else at your job right but you're the only one who's getting demoted and the person who's taking your your position 
they ended up getting fired at the end of that year after consistently underperforming to the point where their own relatives won't even hire them. And what I'm referring to with that is Team France not even picking up Killing Hayes, who I have respect for, but just following the analogy. What would you do if, if you were put in that position? You probably take some kind of action, right? You probably talk to your boss or file a complaint or quit, right? Because you know you deserve better, right? That's basically what happened to Jaden Ivey. That's what happened. But he never quit. He didn't complain. He didn't give up. I talked to his pops. You guys saw the interview offline and on the interview. He told me that. He said, hey, man, Jaden is on phase. He's going to keep working. His work is going to shine through. He's not worried. Jaden is very strong in his faith. He never lo yeah. lost faith in his own ability. Uh, he never wanted to rock the boat over there. He just wanted to be a good teammate and a coachable player. And that was always Jaden's perspective. Just another note to that is Jaden is a, I don't want to, I guess, adopted son or native son of Detroit. All Jaden knows is South Bend, Indiana and Detroit, Michigan. So Jaden wants to put on for Detroit. He wants to be here. He's 100% in on being a Detroit Piston. And so, um, you know, he's going to do whatever it takes to make it work. That level of maturity for a young player is invaluable. Second year player. So I personally, I have Cade starting with J.I. I have J.I. starting with him. And to me, it doesn't make sense to bring him off the bench 15 to 17 minutes a game when you have a young core like we do and when you have a new coach. This is the season to find out what we have in Jaden Ivey and Kay Cunningham as a duo. This is the year to find out what you have in this starting backcourt. Even if you gotta overdo it just to be sure, do it. Get as many reps as possible. After this season, the last thing I wanna hear is, man, we still don't know what we got in Kay and J.I. as a backcourt. We just haven't seen, no, I'm not trying to hear that anymore. We've already heard that enough. I've said it too much. 68 games out of a possible 164. Y'all heard me say it, that they played together. This is the year to find out, right? This is the season. If Jaden is only playing 15 minutes to 17 minutes a game as a backup point guard, right? Because Kate's probably going to play 32, 33, 34, right? There's no way you can decipher what you have between the two of them. Him just getting a chance to show what he can do next to K for a full year, that alone is going to help him. It's going to help his confidence. And just the consistent reps with the same five guys. That that gets overlooked a lot too. Right? When when guys are shuffling in and out of the lineup, you can't develop chemistry that way. Him getting the reps with Cade as his starting backcourt partner, just having the same guys on the floor, just having that continuity and that consistency there with the starting lineup, that alone is gonna help all these guys, but Jaden Ivey in particular, and he needs that. It's hard to be effective when you're starting five and shuffled every other night. You don't even know who you're playing with. I think Ivy's going to benefit from JB the way Darius Garland benefited from JB. A lot of people were wondering if Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell can fit. They thought they, you know, they're a little bit redundant, overlapping as far as their skill sets. He, were, he made it work. They both were all-stars. So if anybody can do it, I believe he's suited for that. And I think that may have been the draw for him to come here and the draw for the Pistons to want to bring him here because they've seen him do it. And this is another reason as to why I love this backcourt potential, man. They're big. They're big. K to 6'7". Six, 6'8", six, if you include his fro. J.I. He's 6'4". Your smallest player is 6'4". Defensively, you can really do some damage. It's going to take some strides from J.I., right? Some strides from all, all these young guys, not just him. Ivy as a starter or six-man backup point guard. Ivy's a starter. So, Cade is a starting point guard. Ivy's a starting shooting guard. Cade goes to the bench five, six minutes into the game. Ivy slides to the point guard spot. When Cade goes out, one of either Tim Hardaway Jr. or Malik Beasley comes in to play the shooting guard spot as Ivy slides to the point guard spot. When Ivy goes out of the game, maybe about seven minutes, eight minutes into the game, you bring K back into the game to play point guard and you leave Malik Beasley in there or Tim Hardaway Jr. in there to finish out the quarter. Bring Jaden Ivey back in the start of the second quarter. That's kind of how I see it happening. I think that's the only way to get Jaden Ivey the 30 plus minutes that everybody else, that's a young guy on his team, right? A star's getting 30 minutes if he starts. JD's getting 30 minutes for sure. Cade's getting 30 for sure. Why not J.I.? Why? What are we doing? So that's the only way to get him that 30 minutes is to have him slide and let him play point guard once Kate goes to the bench and have him as a shooting guard when Kate is in the game. Nostra deuces. That's hilarious. So look, Jalen Dern, right? I think that um, 
I think his success is going to be predicated off of Kane's success. I think the success is kind of tied together because so much of what JD does well is based and predicated on having a guard or guards that can cater to his game. Having more scoring and spacing on the floor with Tobias, that's going to help JD's game a lot, especially in the pick and roll. With more shooting, the paint is going to be less clogged. We know that. I think JB is him and his staff. You know, they're going to be really hard on him. I really hope they are hard on him because one thing JB Beaker's staff said is that he and his and his coaching staff they like to teach. They don't just like to coach; they like to teach. It's a difference. So I'm not expecting JD to be like Jared Allen next season, but I'm expecting him to improve. I expect the coaching staff to demand him to lock in on the defensive side of the ball, even more so than on the offensive side of the ball. I would not be surprised if after next season, we're raving about his defense and not his offense. I would not be one bit surprised if we walk away next season saying JD is a better defensive player than he is offensive player. I would not be one bit surprised at all. Um, I really, I really just have a lot of confidence. I, I, I've seen what he can do, man. I've seen what JD can do defensively. I've seen it. And then I've not seen it. And I've seen such a stark contrast. It's like, come on. So anyway, I really think he's going to be um, a breakout player for this team. I think he can be an all-defense level player. I 100% do. 100% do. And I think that's going to be what he's told to focus on. I think JB and his staff are going to say, JD, become a monster on this end. And the points will come easy. The points will come easy. If you are... A defensive presence your point guard is going to make a point pun intended to find you to reward you it's basketball language it's just it's just how it goes they're going to make because they want to make sure you stay motivated to keep playing that defense so let me get you involved let, let, you, let you have some fun on offense if he becomes a defensive guy that we need him to be he is going to have his share of buckets and i think that's where his offense is going to come from i'm on my way I'm not gonna stop. We 